Hello and welcome to the Rust Project series. Before we begin, a little bit about me. My name is Matthew Studley. I am a software developer, storyteller, and board game designer, and you can find out more about me at storyfeet.com. Now, this course is intended as a kind of core of the Rust ecosystem. So we're going to be spending quite a lot of time looking at what is available in the crate.io package system and and seeing how we can use these to make our projects more effective. For example, during the first section, we are going to be looking at how we can handle command line arguments using a fantastic library called CLAP, which basically does command line arguments, but it uses some very clever techniques to handle them to make it easy for us to write solid programs that are easy for people to read at the same time that make it easy for people to use command line interface programs and know how to use them and how they're going to behave. During the second section, we are going to be using the failure crate, which is built to make handling errors much simpler. So because different libraries return different kinds of errors, and because Rust is type safe, often you may find you need to create um, a large error to handle all of these different kinds of errors. But with the failure crate, we, there is a mechanism for bringing these all together and making one standardized kind of error that works with all of these. And while we're doing that, we'll be building a program that can search for regular expressions throughout our file systems. During section three, we're going to be taking a look at futures in Rust are actually quite complicated, so it's worth taking a long time to go over and make sure we really understand how futures work. So I've dedicated a whole section to futures. They are Rust's main mechanism for handling asynchronous programming. Currently, this is managed by the Tokyo Crate, which is developed by people who are on the Rust team, and they are working towards getting that to be part of the standard language. There are still things that they are working on, but even as they are working on these things, we can take the time and understand how they have futures working for now, and that will make your life a lot easier even when they do get them into the standard language. This allows you to write programs that while one part of the program is waiting for some I.O. to happen, another part is just carrying on and working. And so you don't spend any time just waiting as a program. And this means it can do a lot of things a lot faster. And because it can work safely across multiple threads too, and often does, you really can get the most out of multiple processors on your machine through using futures. During section four, we take the time to actually build a TCP server using Tokyo Futures and certain asynchronous IO techniques. In section five, we're going to be connecting to a database using Diesel, which is a great library for accessing a database, which is normally not type safe. It has to be handled through various string things in a very strongly type safe mechanism. And we're going to be building a kind of shop front database to do this. And in section six, we're going to connect that shop front to a web application so people can access it through their browser. And we're going to be doing that using Actix. As this is kind of a tour of the Rust ecosystem, I do assume some Rust knowledge. For example, you're going to need to know the basic syntax. You're going to need to know how to use a result or an option to handle various error cases. And you're going to need to know how to handle an iterator and use match and question marks. If you don't already know these things, I do recommend checking out my previous course, Rust in Seven Days, which covers all of this and plenty more before coming to the beginning of this course. By the end of this course, you will have a strong grasp on error handling in Rust and on how to use the various result and option types. You'll be able to build database applications and connect those to a web service. And you'll have a strong grasp of how to use futures as part of Rust's asynchronous programming patterns. Let's get started, shall we?